She's a wonderful mother mm. uh, she, of, of three and yes. a wonderful wife. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. I can't imagine myself being married to any other person, any other race <laughs> than a black woman. No, a, bl <laughs> a black see, woman. Uh, see yeah, it's true. Once you go black, you never go, <laughs> you back. Can't, never go back. I can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't imagine myself with any other person than Liz. That Liz. Yes. And yeah. I'm pretty sure she feels the same about you. We'll find out. So. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Now, when Liz was walking there in Manila. So she's a celebrity. She's a celebrity. <laughs> we, we can't even get any service there because yeah. people are too busy admiring her, staring <laughs> at her. It was... Uh, it was uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so she's a celebrity there. <laughs> if you're maybe courting or dating, of course, me and my wife, we did not date. Mm -hmm. We actually started dating after the wedding. But if you're uh, seeking out a person, a wife, or a po future possible mm -hmm. husband, mm -hmm. when you see the red flags, you need to take that into account. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome to Tuko Talks. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, my guest today never wanted to marry anyone outside his race. In fact, when his parents showed him the photo of a lady they had suggested for him, he begged them to find them someone else. So how did they end up together? He has promised to open his entire heart to us and fill us up, and fill us up on their story. So without further ado, please allow me to let him introduce himself. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Thank Habari you for having yako? me. Muzuri sana. Uko poa? <laughs> poa. Kabisa? <laughs> Kabisa. <laughs> I am Asiji introduce. <laughs> yeah, my name is Solomon Ocampo. I'm a pastor missionary here with Gospel Tabernacle Churches of Kenya under yeah. Bishop Dr. Charles Muyu. I'm a husband and a father of three. Yes. And a dad of three. Yes. How does it feel to say you are a husband and a dad of three to a woman you <laughs> begged your parents <laughs> not to let you marry? I'm not going to lie. Uh, some Many times it's still unreal. It's like uh, I feel like I'm still a young boy, 14 years old. So when I see how blessed I am now from my mentality before that I did not want to marry it feels so blessed, like it was not my own doing, but yet I, I'm still blessed. You're still blessed and you love it. I love it today. I, I, I can't imagine my life without them, my wife and my children. Oh, <laughs> and how many siblings are you? We are a total of 12 children in the family. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so all from one father and one mother. And uh, I'm in the middle, number six. <laughs> when you live at Kati, you're number yeah, six. <laughs> number six. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, number six. And what struck me most was the fact that all of you, all your marriages have been arranged by your parents. That's correct. <laughs> 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 all of them. So how do how do they do it? Do they come and tell you I have a girl for you? Pretty much. <laughs> that's that's how it goes. Uh, but no, they of course they involve us as well. Yeah. Uh, but the final decision belongs to us. They involve us uh, and they float some names. Uh, what we noticed was that uh, according to them and how we witness it, they don't really choose the ones that they like the most. So it's more uh, of a spiritual leading Aww. than a personal preference. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, other most arranged marriages Traditionally, if you look at its history, even in other cultures, it's for uh, alliance. Mm. So it could be political or it could be monetary for financial gains or convenience or personal preference. Mm -hmm. And for our parents, uh, to the best of our knowledge, it's not that way that they are marrying for money, for influence or for convenience. But they choose the person they believe uh, that God, the Spirit, has led them to mm -hmm. uh, choose for us. So it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. Or yes. they like That's according to their beliefs, and we believe. Yes. What do you believe? Uh, definitely, we believe uh, seeing their lives, uh, because my father and mother uh, happen to be uh, a prophet and prophetess. My mom is now in heaven mm -hmm. uh, with the her. Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we personally, I saw that it's true that they did not. Uh, choose someone that they preferred for uh, my sister or my brother 
So when it came for me, the same thing uh, happened. Uh, I knew I could testify that this was not their preference. Mm. It was more of who they believe that they are led to for to choose wow. for me. Yes, amazing. Yeah. I keep hearing about the spiritual aspect yeah. in marriages, and it's. Uh, I hosted someone previously, and they said people don't understand that spirituality has a lot to do with a successful marriage. Oh wow! Yes, that's true because uh, Lynn. Uh, marriage was authored and ordained by God. Mm -hmm. So it's God who is the author. He created marriage, yeah. not man. Although yes. man is the one contracting or entering into marriage. Mm -hmm. And now, as you can see in the world today, uh, man is trying to change marriage. Yeah. But it is not man who authored it. So it's God. So the more closer you are to God in terms of approaching marriage, then the closer you are to the original mm. plan for marriage. Okay, amazing. Now my audience are like, Lynn, to peleke kwa story, but na leo umekua, so it will take us through your story on how you met Liz. Uh, as we always say, we did not meet, yeah. uh, but uh, I've met her family because uh, my parents have been missionaries here since the late 1980s. Yeah. And uh, Liz's parents uh, are bishops here, as I said, mm -hmm. and they got into partnership with them. My parents got into partnership with them here in Kenya. Yeah. So the families know each other. And when I came around uh, 2006 to 2009, I lived here also as a missionary, mm -hmm. uh, assisting my parents in their work. Yeah. I met Liz's siblings, uh, her sisters, her brothers, and uh, for some reason, God allowed us not to meet. I did not meet her because also at the time she went to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to do her Bible school. Mm -hmm. And by the time she was coming back to Kenya, I left for the Philippines to pursue my uh, university education. Mm -hmm. So we did not meet at all. And then now when uh, the time came for my mom to suggest a person for me, yeah. uh, she suggested Liz. <laughs> how, how did she suggest her? Uh, the story was that... Uh, the story. My, my, yeah, this, this is now the story. <laughs> uh, she had known Liz yeah. uh, because my father and my other brother, they were hosted in their uh, home. So mm -hmm. they got to know her and the, the siblings. So my mom had knowledge of her, knew her, and they were very close friends with uh, her mom, the mm -hmm. bishop. Mm -hmm. So in 2011, my sister, the one I'm following, was getting married, also an arranged marriage. <laughs> uh, and then my mother invited her to come over, so she flew her over yeah. to attend the wedding and mm -hmm. also to take her on a tour of the Philippines. They went to all three uh, islands in the Philippines. We are 7,700 islands mm. for an archipelago. Mm. So during the wedding, that's when my mom broached the idea to Liz's mom. Uh, she's called Bishop Akiki. Mm. She said, uh, I think your daughter should marry my son. Well, <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was there in the wedding, of course. So yeah. I, uh, they started talking about that. And Bishop Akiki was, you know, was okay to the idea. Mm -hmm. she, she was not doing it. She, it's not something that they've been doing. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I hear from the story of Liz that mm. sh the mom called her, yeah, uh, but it wasn't told to me yet as a, as a formal proposition. Mm. She, uh, it was just mentioned, yeah. like, what do you think? Yes. So that's now when I was shown the picture of Liz. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Liz uh, joined a beauty pageant in Texas yeah. and she had won and she would have won first place, but because she didn't agree to wear a swimsuit, I think. Yeah she got first run Run first up. runners up <laughs> so that was the picture it's looking so beautiful so <laughs> refined of course it, so it was shown to me so but when they were talking about liz of course kenyan from africa and i saw it i said no i said no please no uh don't don't let me get married to anyone outside of uh Fili philippines i said i'm open to uh, be married to anyone as long as she's a Filipina. 
So uh, let me ask you, yes. <laughs> this pretty woman has been presented yes. to you. They definitely sourced the best photo uh, for you. Yes. And you are here looking <laughs> and you are saying, no, 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 no. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, previously, uh, I was or also uh, approached to be given, uh, not given, to, to, to be proposed to be married to uh, a white American lady. Yeah. Uh, a family friend also and I said the same to my mom that mm. as long as it's a Filipina that would be my preference. I was very close-minded because you know growing up in primary school in Philippines we call it elementary they would teach us how as a race we were conquered and colonized by the foreigners yes. right by the Spanish mm -hmm. specifically for 600 years mm -hmm. so from a young age I was very nationalistic very patriotic everything Filipino just the glory of Philippines Filipino, uh, uh, Filipino, woman, Filipino, Filipino kids, everything yes loyalty. Filipino food yes. language yes I'm still patriotic <laughs> uh, but no longer close-minded like before yeah. <laughs> yeah so let's just be clear it was not because Liz was black or from Kenya it's simply because you did not want to marry a woman yes, who was not Yes, definitely Filipino. not. Uh, of course, it sounds bad, especially nowadays. <laughs> <with> black Lives <laughs> Matter and discrimination. But no, it was not yes. because she was black. Yeah. But it was simply that I wanted uh, my own Filipina. Mm -hmm. uh, right? uh, before, okay. of course, now yeah. looking back, yeah. I can't imagine my wife yeah. to be a Filipina. In fact, I tell her all the time that uh, I'm so blessed that it was you I married and not what I wanted mm -hmm. yeah yeah let me take you back yes. a little yes. even before they introduced Liz to you via a photo <laughs> were there no Filipino women you were hitting on that you could have married uh, there were there mm -hmm. were uh, Filipina women that uh, I could have married yeah. yes uh, but then my my mom my mom I intervened and said that no that is not suitable for you not because she didn't like the person yeah. or not because of, as I said, money, power, convenience. Yes. But because she saw in the spirit that uh, they were not the person for me, f for uh, for, from God. Okay. Yes, because we're very close to that. Uh, yeah. We believe, live, th that's the way I was raised, yeah. that uh, very Christian, very conservative and very uh, close to following what God's will is for my life. Mm -hmm. That's why you see here I'm a missionary. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, all your siblings, have they married or been married to the Philippines or none of you has married a Filipino? Most of them have married uh, within the Philippines, oh, okay. Filipina, mm -hmm. uh, but several of them, one married uh, an American white lady because mm -hmm. he's also now living in the States. Yeah. He's a citizen, yeah. he, he got his US citizenship. <laughs> Uh, but all the rest have, are married or arranged for a uh, Filipina. Okay, yes. moving forward swiftly. Yes. You've rejected this person. <laughs> you don't even want the photo. Even this photo of her looking really nice is not yeah. attractive yeah. to you. You still want a Filipino <laughs> woman. How did we end up here? Uh, that's true. She was very attractive, very good looking yeah. in the photo. But with my close mind, I couldn't see beyond it. Uh, you know, when you're close minded, nobody can tell you anything. So mm -hmm. I even called up my grandmother. <laughs> I said, is there anything you can do? Please try to talk to your daughter. Now my mom, and I called my uncle. Can you please talk to your sister? <laughs> please, please, please. Like, just do, do me this one favor. <laughs> I'll owe you for the rest of my life. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but then my mom did not force it. It wasn't something like a forced arranged marriage, which is another reason why me and Liz, uh, we don't recommend arranged marriage usually because it can be open to manipulation. Like if you're forced or manipulated or coerced in any way, definitely that's very bad. Uh, that's, uh, it can be abused. So it wasn't like that with me, uh, with my mom and dad. Uh, they just presented it to me and at first it was just my mom uh, so it's like two friends you know pairing up their children their son and the daughter and my mom my dad was not on board with it yeah. for him his stand was uh, he's not going to give in to it just because he's being pressured he he wanted to wait until he had clarity that he believes he's led by the spirit mm -hmm. that for sure it was that mm -hmm. person yeah. for for any of us 
So it continued on, that was 2011. So it, it was, you know, just uh, an idea there. Uh, I'm still close-minded. So as time went on, uh, they came again now back to the Philippines. The mom, <laughs> this time she brought all her family, her children, uh, they were helping a friend shop for uh, that friend's wedding. So they were in the Philippines for a vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, they all brought of them. everyone. Yeah, they including brought. Including Liz. Including Liz, ah, yes. yes. As a <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, by, by this time now, it, you know, it was still nothing formal. It was not yet an arranged or sealed marriage. It was just an idea. Mm -hmm. So when we got there, uh, th we hosted them. We were the one who were hosting them in the Philippines and taking them around. Not me, but my family, mm -hmm. because at that, that time I was in university. Yeah. yeah. And so when they came and my dad was still not open to the idea, my dad who's the prophet also. Mm. And so when, before they left, uh, when they were going back to, the, to Kenya, uh, we hosted for them a uh, farewell party, we call it Dispidi de the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody was called, our church there, uh, throwing for them a party and I came from the university. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what was going to happen. Uh, and then by that time, I didn't know, then my, my father had already, he sought the Lord. He went on a serious uh, seeking God, he went on a fast. And he really searched within his heart because at the time he said he's not going to accept anything uh, short of God's confirmation leading to him. Mm -hmm. So he did receive it. He got the confirmation and he felt like this was uh, from God, that mm -hmm. this was the person that God wanted for me. Mm -hmm. And so in that dispedida, in that farewell party, where all of them were there, Liz and her mom and mm. the siblings. Uh, they, they just called me and they said, as we say goodbye to the, the Muyus, uh, we also want to announce the betrothal of Solomon. <laughs> of Sol <laughs> That's me, I'm, I was pretty shocked because <laughs> I wasn't told beforehand or anything like that. Uh, so they told me to come in front and they said it was Liz. <laughs> she started crying because she also had no idea. <laughs> Hold on. So because my audience, they need to understand this. So you are doing a farewell and yeah. all of a sudden they say, you and you. Yes, together. you and you. You, you, and you together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing before. So they came and they asked us, so do you, what do you say? Do you accept or do you reject or what do you say? Uh, I remember my words clearly up to today because I meant it. I said, uh, I, as it is in heaven, as the Lord wills, so let it be on earth. Like whatever God's will is for me, I'm now surrendering to it. Because previously, remember, I was holding on. I was a no. I was a no uh, to non-Filipinos. <laughs> but this time I said, uh, if it's the will of God, it's not, I'm not saying yes, okay, this is the will of God, but whatever is the will of God that I will find out for myself, mm -hmm then I surrender to that. Mm. So now this was the, the day or the moment I, I backed down from my close-minded, small-mindedness of yes. just going one way. Yeah. So this day I said, uh, I'm now open to the will of God that I will, I will get that if it's the will of God. So now uh, Liz is back in Kenya, mm -hmm. you're back in the Philippines, and then yes. you guys now, you even have a family together. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, now, present day. Yes. Yeah, so we're happily married now mm -hmm. uh, after many years and I can't imagine my life without her. Mm. And for sure God knew better mm -hmm. <laughs> than what I have was. I was planning to stick to my gun, stick to my lines. Yeah. Uh, but looking back in hindsight, you know, our arranged marriage at the end of the day is still a marriage like any other. You go through ups and downs mm -hmm. and the enemy lies to you all the time or your mind uh, tries to deceive you that oh you could have done better or what if what if and that comes to us as well yeah. uh, but i can say with certainty now uh, with all honesty that definitely it was the best decision god knew bet 
better for mm. me, new best for me, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine any other person, any yeah. other race other than Liz, oh. uh, who's the perfect uh, wife for me. She compliments me in everything. Yeah. She brings out the best. She doesn't tolerate my nonsense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Do you tolerate hers? <laughs> I try to extend grace, yes. yes. <laughs> I think that's our job as yeah. husbands. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, so it hasn't been easy, especially the first year was very difficult, mm. the most difficult in our marriages. So it doesn't mean that when I said yes or when I followed what I believe was God's will for me, that everything is roses. No, there's also thorns, mm. but you, the foundation was the faith in God, was obedience to God's will. Mm. And when God was the foundation, it, it was different from emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, the usual is you fall in love with someone and for sure there needs to be love. Yeah. So that's why you get married, because yeah. you're in love with yeah. that person. Uh, and of course we hear from the movies and the TV and the world, and there's some uh, wisdom to it, to follow your heart, follow the best person you you think you love. But the danger with that, the other side of that, there's always pros and cons. So the, that's a pro, but the con mm. or the negative side of that, feelings end, feelings change. Even in marriage, all the married people there, they know. <laughs> even girlfriend and boyfriend, there are some days that you, f you don't even feel any love for your spouse or your pa partner. Mm -hmm. So because we did not start our marriage on emotion it was not the driving force it was not the uh, decision maker yeah. of our marriage mm -hmm. then we were we are able to weather so much more storms because when we come to our fights our highs and lows and it, it does come mm -hmm. and i'm sure it will still come mm -hmm. uh, we're still learning a lot mm -hmm. so there are lows in marriages so you, when i don't know the reason why i'm married to this person sometimes you don't know why then you come back oh it's god oh it's god i, I followed the voice of god oh this was arranged by god mm. this is god because you have to take ownership now i can't tell liz or my father hey you're the one who put us together this is your problem this now look what burden. you yeah take this is your, your burden. burden take your yeah. burden oh, look at this what is this yeah. you said it would be no <laughs> It's still our marriage. Yeah. Yes, they guided us, but at the end of the day, you it's are our the marriage. Two, the yes. two of you are the ones in a relationship. Yes, and yeah. we bring in God to that, uh, so that at the end of my rope, when I'm finished, you know, when you're fighting, when you're all is gloom and doom, as I said, it does come, and you don't know, you can't find any reason to stay together. Because sometimes this person is the person you love the most, but there are days when you're fighting this person is the person you hate the most. <laughs> exactly. You don't know why I you're know, together. I know what you mean. Yes, yes it yes, happens yeah. in a, any relationship. Mm -hmm. So if it was just emotion, oh, I married her because I was in love with her 10 years ago, then you can't find that emotion. Yeah. But you have to realize that love is not an emotion, it's just a decision. So when you, for us, because the foundation was God, then when I'm finished, when I'm at the end of my rope, then I find, oh, it's God. It's oh, it's God. God. God who put us together. This is God's uh, union and God will take care of us. So this is the reason we're together. So yes. we, continue. Will we continue. But of course, God is love. So he yes. brings that love. Okay. You, but you know, when you're fighting, you're in that cloud, you're overwhelmed, you're drowning in yes. hate, in arguments or what, then God, God's love comes. God's love yes. comes. So it's important to base your relationship on a good foundation. Yes, on a good foundation. On a good foundation. Yes. According to you, how do you know this woman is for me? As a man, how do you know this woman is for me? <laughs> yes, uh, definitely there's going to be red flags, right? If you're maybe courting or dating, of course, me and my wife, we did not date. Mm -hmm. We actually started dating after the wedding. but. If you're uh, seeking out a person, a wife, or a po future possible husband, mm -hmm. when you see the red flags, you need to take that into account. Mm -hmm. You can't dismiss that. So you can know who is not for you. Because uh, many people, you know, they just turn a blind eye to those red flags. Maybe if he's already showing unfaithfulness or what, or he's playing around or he's not valuing you. 
then that is the person not for you. So yeah. who do you, how do you know who this person is for you? Of course, God speaks to us in our hearts. So when you find in your heart of heart that that person is the one, that is one sign, but not the only sign, because our heart is, is very deceiving. It will lead us astray. Mm. So the best way to know is, of course, to get closer to God, to hear God's voice in your life. Yeah. There's so many voices. You yeah. have your parents' voices, your friends, your aunties, society, e even yourself. You know, you talk to yourself and say, oh, I'm never going to get married yeah. or this person. There's a lot of negative self-talk. So first of all, don't add to that negative talk. Yeah. Talk positive. You're going to get married. God has a perfect person for you. You're going to be blessed because that's God's perfect will for you. Yeah. So you get closer, try to cl get closer to God's voice, to hear Him, and He will never lead you astray. So how do you get close to God's voice? Read His word, uh, listen to His servants, and uh, seek out to pray. And if you search for an answer, God will give it to you. Yeah. So that's how you know. That's how you know. Did you not face criticism? Did people tell you you are leaving Filipino girls for a Kenyan? All criticism was there. I'm telling you, uh, there was a lot of opposition. In fact, even when we were arranging for the wedding here, mm. a lot of people were saying, even uh, some pastors were, were, were telling, were saying that, oh, this is uh, not right. You're, you're going to cry. You're going to do this and that. Oh, what will you do? This is not the normal way of doing things. You know, there, there's a, there was a lot of opposition, definitely. Uh, even here in Kenya, mm. uh, for those who, who heard it. That's why, in fact, Liz did not broadcast it that, hey, I'm going to an arranged marriage. Uh, there was opposition, yes. Uh, but uh, now, after many, many years, uh, time has proven, and it's still proving, we're not yet done, uh, that, it, you know, we are still together and we're, we're lo madly in love with each other. We mm. love each other mm. uh, despite the uh, ups and downs. Mm. So it's just to listen to which voice. So the opposition will be there. And I remember <laughs> in the early years, I was walking uh, on the streets with Liz. <laughs> Some people were just, you know, sometimes they are not afraid to express their opinion, but they were really, uh, just uh, harassing us. They say, well, how come you're, you're with that person? Just on the street. Uh, of course, not. that's just uh, uh, one bad apple. Mm. It's not everyone who was like that. But one person who was not afraid to speak his mind was just uh, abusing us of why we were together and all this. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we, we faced it. We faced it. It's not a common thing. Mm. Uh, but we, we know we are strong. We, we love each other. Mm. Yes, uh, but in the Philippines, Filipinos love Liz. Really? <laughs> yeah, they always approach her. Uh. Uh, they always ask her autograph. They ask her if she's <laughs> a celebrity. They watch her in a Hollywood movie. Uh. <laughs> they ask her if she is a model. <laughs> so in the Philippines, they love her. Uh, so that's the other side of it, because yeah. we're not used to uh, black people in the Philippines. Now we are. Uh, now we are, but yeah. we're used to Americans because they also colonize us. So when we see a white person, yes. nobody even nobody, looks. Nobody bothers. Nobody bothers. But yeah. now when Liz was walking there in Manila, so she's, every, a celeb she's a celebrity. Manila. <laughs> we, we can't even get any service there because yeah. people are too busy admiring her, staring yeah. at her. <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she's a celebrity there. <laughs> Let in me ask street. you, what, what is it about Liz that you love the most? Uh, I, I love her creativity and she's very passionate, which I could have <laughs> some of it. I could use some of it myself. <laughs> but she, she's very passionate yeah. and uh, she's headstrong when, yes. when she's set on uh, accomplishing uh, her mission, whether it's in her ministry in her personal life, mm -hmm. in the house, mm -hmm. redecorating the yeah, house, uh, you just know it's going to happen. Yeah. And she pours out all of her soul, her heart, her time, her effort into it. Mm. She doesn't do things uh, half-baked. She, she does it to perfection. Yeah. Uh, okay, she's not really a perfectionist that she obsesses over a small thing, yeah. but you just know when she sets her mind into something, whether she, it's an event mm. or anything, mm. it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Even yeah. uh, uh, whatever she's doing here, in, in, even in Kenya, in her midst, mm. she's, she's a busy person. Yeah. Uh, and she just 
gives all of herself into mm -hmm. it and then she's a wonderful mother mm -hmm. uh, she, of, of three and a wonderful wife yeah. and uh, as I mentioned earlier yeah. I can't imagine myself being married to any other person any other race <laughs> than a black woman. No, a, bl a black see, woman. Uh, yeah, it's true. Once you go black, you never go <laughs> you back. Can, you never go back. I can't go back, <laughs> and I can't imagine myself with any other person than Liz. That Liz, yes, and yeah. I'm pretty sure she feels the same about you. We'll find out. So. Yeah, we'll <laughs> find out. <laughs> uh, you are in an interracial uh, yes. relationship, marriage, and yours is working. And I know it's because you have also had to put God mm -hmm. in uh, in that relationship and also put in a lot of work. But so many people are facing a lot of challenges out there. So what are some of the tips you would give anyone in that kind of situation? Yes, you're completely right, mm -hmm. Lynn. Uh, it was primarily putting God first and putting work. Yeah. Because you can't say, oh, God arranged this marriage, I believe, so let God work on it. No, mm. <laughs> it's your marriage. Mm. So that work has to be put in. And some of those specific uh, work items, <laughs> if we can call them that, yeah. are just learning to admit that maybe your culture is not the best culture at all times. Because you see, I have my own Filipino culture and Liz comes here with her Kenyan culture and there are things that she does in other ways that in my culture says, no, it's not that, that way. My culture says this, my culture, my culture. If you're just going to stick to your own culture, to my own culture, then nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. or you're just going to end up with fights and we had a lot of fights yeah. in the first year because you just imagine trying to live with another person it's difficult because you're this way or you and I'm that way and imagine now people from two different worlds mm -hmm. uh, the good thing was we had a very similar Christian upbringing so in that way we're very similar yeah. with our uh, biblical values mm -hmm. but everything else the culture how she talks how she does things is different so my tip you were asking is that I now had to realize that okay, maybe my culture is not the best culture in the world. There are some good aspects and there are some negative aspects. And this culture that she's bringing, there are some great aspects and maybe some not good aspects. So it's that ability, that willingness to lay down your guard and say, okay, let me embrace now the good aspects of this culture. Mm -hmm and the good aspects of my culture. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you become richer. Mm -hmm. You're now richer. Mm -hmm. You'll find if mm -hmm. you're willing to now uh, let go, not completely, but be more open. Be more because open. we're raised, you know, just to know what's good yeah. with our culture. Yeah. Everything my culture, you can't mm -hmm. even eat any other food except your own food mm -hmm. because that's how you grew up. Mm -hmm. And for sure, it, there's some wisdom and benefit to that. But when you allow yourself to open up and be flexible be flexible mm. and recognize that you're not the only right person even other cultures have wisdom mm. they even have good things for you to add mm. so now you can be constructive it yeah. will be complementing each other mm. and then there will be harmony because if you just stand your guard no this is how i've always eaten my food this is how i've always done things so now I don't even eat my food all the time. Yes. I eat Kenyan to, food. You have to meet each other. Yes, we have to meet yes. each other because if I'm here and I haven't left the Philippines, I brought it with me, I'm sticking to my Philippines. No, this Filipino way, Filipino food. Yes. Then what's the need of me leaving my country if I'm not ready even to embrace uh, the local culture? Good. So that's my tip uh, for interracial. And then the other thing, is it's not going to be easy for your children as well because now they don't know whether they're Filipina or they're Kenyan, mm -hmm. they're black or they're Asian. Mm. So uh, that needs wisdom and work to be careful to remind them and to teach them the right way that you are Filipina and you are Kenyan. Yes. You are African and, and you're, you're Asian. Asian. So sometimes my da daughter says, no, no, I'm, I'm only Filipina, I'm only Filipina. Mm -hmm. I say, no, you're not. You're Filipina, Kenyan. Yeah. You're African, Asian. Asian. Because now they're going to be in between, right? 
uh, when they're in the Philippines, they're not fully Filipina. People will talk to them, hey, why is why are you like that? Why, yeah. why do you look like this? When they're here, they're not fully yeah, Kenyan. Kenyan as well. So it needs wisdom, it needs work. Mm -hmm. It's You can't raise them the same way you raise a normal uh, a a, Filipina, a Filipina oh, or Kenyan, Kenyan yeah. who is not biracial. So yeah. biracial, there's a, a bit more intricacy, mm -hmm. some bit more sensitivity yeah. in raising up your family. So there's uh, unique challenges to an interracial couple, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, lovely. Wow, I don't know, I, I feel like I don't want this episode to come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> so before we conclude, what would be your parting shot? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Lynn, and yeah. your viewers at Tuco, yes. and your readers. Uh, it's been wonderful. My parting shot is just uh, know what is right for you, yeah. get closer to God's voice, and make sure that that decision mm -hmm. to get married is one of the most important decision in your life. Yeah. So don't ignore the red flags, but at the same time, uh, don't be afraid to take risks for love, for marriage, especially when you believe that it's God's leading for you. When it's God. Yes, when it's, when it's God. God. When it's God. So don't be afraid <laughs> yes. to take a leap of faith. Yes. I think that's my takeaway. Like for today, I've just realized how important it is to take a leap of faith because I still can't understand <laughs> how you decided this is what God has decided for me and this is what I want for for my life. So I think my audience were inspired and I hope you guys you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know if you loved it and if you would love to see him back on the show to even talk to us about some other things apart from arranged marriage yeah? because I would love to know according to you if you advocate or if you do not advocate and why. Guys that's it for today. Remember you can always share your story with me. My email is pinned on that comment section. Hapo penye mnasauma comment and as always thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate. My name is Lynn Gugit. Till next time. Bye bye.